Hey guys, Dylan from the Geek Duo here, and today I'll be bringing you my reaction to Shadow Hunters Season 1, Episode 4, titled Raising Hell. Clary enlists the help of mysterious warlock Magnus Bane to summon the demon that has taken her memories. A deep secret is revealed about Alec. I wonder what that secret could be. But no, um, people who were watching the show prob- I can't say that because people who were watching the show probably came to it from the books and everything, so they already know what that secret is. But new people probably did it because it's- I don't want to say it was obvious in the books, but it was definitely more obvious- than it is in the show. Also, still not entirely sure about the fact that it's a demon that took her memories in this. Because, uh, well, it's even been shown Jocelyn taking Clary to... No, she was taken to Magnus as a child to remove her sight to make her not be able to see the magic the um shadow world whereas in the books she was taken to magnus to remove her memories of the shadow world and there wasn't really a way for them to be gotten back so i don't know if it's going to be the same where she doesn't get her memories back like fully or what but We'll see in three, two, one, go. Also, I have a feeling I said that I was going to um talk about things once they actually happen in relation to um implications from the last episode. It's been three weeks since I recorded that episode. I've got no idea what I was going to say.
very sound. You know, one day I do hope that this gets like the um, Percy Jackson treatment in what it's getting now, in which they actually get Cassandra Clare to help um, make a more faithful adaptation. Because this, having read this series again recently, it is like my second favorite series. And I'm currently reading through Infernal Devices now, so I'd love to see that brought to life. I almost let a comment slip out about something that happens future in this series. Kirk. Kirk was one of his bandmates in the books. Uh, I wonder if, is that the same Kirk? Only one way to find out, type in champagne, anima, model instruments, I really thought that would work. Yeah, Kirk. He was... He was in the band. Specifically, he was the lead singer. Interesting.
honestly, the curse they've put on Hodge in this is very interesting. And not being able to talk about um, the circle. Because it does seem a more apt punishment, I guess. Compared to just being locked inside the um, institute. Necklace. Only one thing they said about that was wrong. Fuck was that? Also, I'm pretty sure I'm meant to be a warlock. Maybe not. Is that the shirt? Well, the dress where Isabel turns around and says, on me, that's a shirt.
think that was another direct line from the book from Isabel to Clary. Not really apt, but I wonder, do we get to see the things he's just talking about?
All right, that's what I was, that's what I was going to talk about. No, I think I did talk about that. I don't know. I'll probably have to rewatch the. I do like the one they got for Isabel. She seems like she's having fun. Checking the inscription on the back. The inscription that wasn't actually revealed to exist until the um, supplementary prequel series.
What is her accent? Anything Parabatai do together is stronger. Any rune they put on each other is more efficient than the normal. Because she was raised a human. Number you have rung is not in range. No, I probably wouldn't have left New York.
do, but okay. Straight to business then. That is elaborate of... Oh, is that a Gorgon head in the middle? It is. Hold him. Break the bomb before it retreats, it can escape. You don't want a greater demon escaping. Where do you think that um, warlocks get the desire to make payments, like well deals and that? They get it from the demon blood. Same with fairies.
Oh, so this is how it's getting out. Hang it, Alec. <laughs> well, interesting that they got to Alec before they showed who Jace's was. Okay, so for the most part, that 
sort of went down the same way it did book like it had the same beats just in different um different scenarios like hmm. Alec and Magnus meeting at a party that Magnus attended well technically he hosted it in his penthouse in the book it was Isabel who got the note through her dalliances with Malion who got the invitation and yeah they met I think he made a comment about the necklace to Isabel in the book I'm not quite sure but it's not really that important um this the meaning of Magnus to discuss him taking her memories and everything was before Simon got taken by the vampires in the book but that doesn't really matter the placement in this one he was kidnapped in that one he was accidentally turned into a rat like it's not that important like and honestly the the kidnapping him knowingly does more play into Camille and her reason for being in the show than um, if they just followed the main story beat so it makes sense that they're two separate things um, I'm not sure about Valak I think I think the demon appears but under different um, different like circumstances I'm not quite sure I don't think it was um I think it was Villac not finding anything but yeah it wasn't a memory de well there was a demon that took their memory but it was under different circumstances but yeah um and finding out that Alec is in love with Jace that does happen in the book but it happens fairly early on I think it may be around this time where um, in the corridors of the Institute, Clary and him get into an altercation and she brings up that she knows he's in love with Jace because it's fairly obvious. And then he snaps at her like, don't, don't tell anyone. Like he grabs her by the collar and slams her against the wall and all that. And she's like, I wouldn't, but. Like, she thinks that he hates her because she's clo getting close to Jace and he's being overprotective because of his um, feelings for him. Which is not wrong. Though, in this, he could have very easily played it off of, of course you're the person I love the most. Your soul is literally entwined with mine through the Parabatai bond. Like, of course you're the person that I care for the most like, but of course they needed stakes and everything they needed it to be as dramatic a outcome as it is in the book while also feeding into the um like story that they've taken this down so i can understand why they did it that way i just it could have been easily played off. Um, the necklace. The only thing wrong with this is that Isabel was not wearing it from the start. Because, to be honest, when Clary was given that purple necklace, I thought that that was going to be this show's version of Isabel's necklace. But... No, that one links her to her mum, whereas this 
one was hidden in the floors of the Institute. Everything they said about that is correct. The fact that it was a gift from Magnus to Camille back when they were together during the 1800s. Um, him wanting it back was the only issue I had with that because um, eventually Camille and Magnus break up she gives him the necklace back. He then gives that to um, Will. Will gives it to his sister. His sister marries a Lightwood. And then it's just passed down like an heirloom through the Lightwood family. That's how it eventually gets to Isabel. You won't know some of those names that I said unless you've read um, Infernal Devices. But yeah, so... The only issue I had was him wanting it back because he doesn't really want to be reminded of his um, dalliances with Camille. Um, but yeah, all in all, this I still say this is an enjoyable show. Like, sure, it's got Netflix CGI. I'll give it that. Most notably when... The, we're trying to pull Jace from the demon and all that. That was not the best. But. And also it's got Netflix scripting. Like. I cannot contain the demon any longer. Why? No one. Not even Magnus would take the effort to. Um, do a full sentence without contractions. And. Especially while he's expending the power to contain that demon, it'd be as short as possible. Like, I can't contain it much longer. Like, the overuse of him saying demon in pretty much every sentence relating to it is... was unnecessary. It was unnatural, but, like, still... I am always going to have issues with shows being adapted weirdly. Like, as I said, this is still hitting the same beats. It's just made some changes that I don't understand. And switched things around. Like, one thing that it is seemingly heading towards is the same thing that I think the movie did in relation to Simon. But whereas with the movie, that was because it was only a one-time deal. Whereas this... I don't actually know if they had confirmed that they'd be able to do future seasons. So again, it may be because it was a one-time deal thing. So, hmm. If that's the case, then I can understand why they wanted to do it, but... One thing I don't understand. Why did they change the band? Like. Simon's band. Uh, let's just go back. Um, there. Simon's band. Um, Eric. Kirk. Matt. Simon. And eventually Kyle. Those are the members of the band. Here we see it's just Simon and Maureen, who, as I said, was meant to be a 14-year-old um, fangirl of Simon when he was 16, 17, like had an unhealthy obsession with him and everything. And, yeah. And so they did get the whole she has a crush on him from the book and they aged her up so that if they wanted to go down that path they could I, I can understand that I can understand aging up Maureen even with even if they were going the normal route of her just being a fangirl I can see 
her aging her up because of how problematic that could be seeing actual people doing that but it's also not uncommon with um people in bands and that but anyway i so they brought maureen into the band even if they just did that it's fine but to make it a two people band get rid of simon's three best friends outside of clary in fact turning one of them into apparently a school bully like i don't understand that also, if they were going to go down the whole Kyle joins the band, because that's a actual plot-relevant point, are they going to make it a three-person band? Hmm. Anyway, I just don't understand the inclusion of Maureen into the actual story. But, anyway, um gonna end this one here i am enjoying this more than i thought i might after the first episode and from what i'd heard about it i might still not like it once i get to them completely changing things in season two i'll have to wait and see but so far it is enjoyable it is a clearly different story while still using the same characters and that so like i can see similarities there's enough similarities for it to be enjoyable from a book reader's perspective there's enough differences to make it a interesting watch so that the book readers aren't just getting the same story again even though some of them myself included would not be opposed to that and you don't actually have to read the book to gain information that can't really be translated properly into screen so that can help as well but anyway uh, i'm gonna end this one here i'll catch you in the next one